This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone, good morning. Okay, uh, so first thing, um, I hope uh, all of you might have got access to the shared folder, right? No will confirm. Yes, we got access, Ravan. Okay, so We'll be giving you separate access. So whatever the access that you have uh, uh, currently, uh, I'll remove that access and give you separate access. Okay, so you can check it tomorrow for that. Uh, and uh, so we did yesterday. We, um, we discussed about uh, ESR objects. So have you all uh, um, practiced uh, or created the ESR objects that are needed? Okay, so have you all uh, um, started practicing the um, topics that we're discussing on a daily basis? So shall I take it as an S yes or no? Actually, I got uh, access yesterday itself. Uh, I didn't do much. Okay, what about others? Uh, sir, today only I joined. I'm going through the past recorded sessions. Okay, Shodha. Yeah, um, yeah, I understand you joined today. So yes, we'll sir. be giving you access, Shodha. Uh, by uh, tomorrow, you can uh, check your access again. You will be able to access the folders and then you can go through the sessions, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Agraju, what about you? I also accept today. Sorry? I also access today. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, so I cannot connect to serve. Mm. Okay. 
Why? I mean, what I'm, about I'm unless you have... Yes. Okay, um, Kiran and Nagaraju, you have been given with server access, right? Are you able to connect to that server? Someone for me. Yes, yeah, for me, it's like I need to access the server with the personal computer, but right now I don't have a personal one, so I should not access that one. But uh, I, I, I'm able to practice that in my uh, development box, so, so I know that, yeah. Okay, what about you, Nagaraja? Are you able to connect to server? Um, fan Geeta, uh, if you're having an issue, please uh, check with admin team. Uh, they'll help you with the access, okay? Try to get it resolved uh, uh, by calling them, okay? Are you able to see my screen? Mm, yes. Okay. So yesterday uh, we discussed about uh, ECC, uh, sorry, uh, ESR objects. What are the objects uh, that we need to uh, create uh, as part of this uh, requirement, right? So we understood what is a requirement and what is a schema for it. And we created the ESR objects accordingly with uh, from right from uh, data type to message, data type, message mapping, um, message types, uh, service interfaces, operation mapping, and all these things we have created, okay? So now we'll uh, create uh, so now we'll uh, create uh, this uh, ID objects. We'll see what are the ID objects that are needed for us. okay and we'll see the uh, we'll try to create the relevant objects that are needed as part of this interface. So right now uh, when we talked about ID objects, uh, ensure that we are talking with respect to single stack for now. So when it is a single stack, it means uh, your uh, um, interface will run only on Java stack. Okay. So these are the objects that are needed for you to define an interface uh, to run it on a single on Java stack is these are the objects that are needed for you. Okay. Like first thing is uh, we need an object uh, to refer to that particular application. So here we have two applications. One is sender and one is receiver. So we need an object that is needed for us to represent that application. So I already told you what is that object. So can you tell me what is the object that we need to use here? What do we call that object to refer uh, or to represent that particular application? We call it as a communication component. Okay. You can see here we already discussed about this. We call it a, we need a one communication component. So either this communication component uh, can be either uh, a business system or business component. Okay. In which cases we use business system and which cases we use business component. That also something I've already told you. Okay. Uh, business system, we use it uh, to represent uh, uh, SAP applications, whereas uh, we use a business component to represent non-SAP applications in general. So in this case, let us assume that uh, these two are non-SAP applications for us. Then we go with the business component. Okay. So first, we first is first thing is we have to create a business components for both sender and receiver. Okay. Then, what is the other objects that are needed for us? We have to receive the data and we have to send the data, right? So we can do that using channels, okay? So we have to create a sender channel to receive the data or to pick the data and we have to create a receiver channel to push the data. So we need channels, one for sender and another for receiver, okay? 
next thing we need ico ico is nothing but integrated configuration ICO is nothing but uh, integrated configuration which will be used to um, configure the pipeline steps or the pipeline steps will be a part of this ICO object where you will be having inbound processing, receiver, uh, receiver, I mean interface determination and uh, receiver agreement. All these things will be part of it ICO. So these are the objects that are needed for us to create for this interface. Okay. So let's uh, create these objects one by one. So first thing is I need a business component. So for that, uh, uh, I'll create a, uh, so I'll, I already have. Shravan, okay, have, discuss, create, uh, have you discussed sorry. pipeline steps already? Yeah, I already explained what are the pipeline steps. As part of a demo, I explained, and as part of the next class, also I explained what are the pipeline steps. Okay. If you want, I'll explain it once again. Uh, when we are dealing with classical scenario, I'll explain what are the pipeline steps again. Okay. Okay. Fine. So we'll uh, create a business component uh, for now for this uh, requirement for us. Okay. So we'll create a business component for that. What you can do, you can go to your integrate integration builder and then right click on this business component, click on new. You can provide the business component name here. You can see even though you're creating a business component, you can see the name here as communication component. Okay. Even if you try to, it doesn't matter what is it. We call it as a communication component. So try to understand that when someone is referring, asking you saying that, okay, uh, can you create or can you check this communication component? It can be either business system or it can be either business component. Okay. So you have to check in both. If you are giving you, if there someone is giving you a specific name and ask you to check it. If this, if they specifically mention you that uh, it is a business component or business system, then you can check it accordingly. Okay. <coughs> So I have created these uh, business component underscore um, source. Okay. So this is for my sender. I'll save it and activate. And then I'll create a one more business component. BC underscore target. Okay. Okay. Next. So we are done with the business components for both sender and receiver. Next thing is we need to create channels. So for that, we need a one sender channel and one receiver channel. So here we create a sender channel uh, associated with uh, sender component and we create a receiver channel associated with receiver component. Okay. So when I say associated, you will understand what I mean to say that. Okay. So when you go, so for creating channel, what you can do, you can right click anywhere. Uh, you can select the corresponding object type here. So we are trying to create a channel here. So here, what I'm trying to create, my channel is CC communication channel underscore. What is the direction? It's sender, sender underscore. What is the scenario? File interface. Okay. So this is the channel name that I'm giving where I'm giving some proper naming convention here, uh, communication channel followed by file sender followed by file interface. Okay. So reading this, someone will understand that, okay, this communication channel is a file sender channel. Okay. Related to this particular interface or scenario. Now, as this is my sender channel, I need to associate this with my sender component. What is my sender component? Hmm. 
what is my center component that I have created just now? BC center component. Okay, so I can select the corresponding center component here as a BC underscore source. Okay, so why I'm doing this? Because I will be referring this particular uh, um, component, right? So this is related to my application, what I am having as a sender. So that's why I have to create a channel also related or linked to this particular component. Okay. I'll create a channel here. I'll select that at adapter type as file. Okay, so don't worry about these uh, parameters now. For now, I will explain them uh, in the next session. What are these parameters and why do we need them? Okay, I'll just uh, save it and activate it. Okay, now you can see under uh, BC underscore uh, source, you can see this channel. Okay, so similarly, I'll create a one more channel. This is my file receiver. So this is my file receiver channel and this should be associated with uh, uh, a component. Which component? BC underscore target. Okay. And I'll be using file adapter here also. And remember, um, this is my receiver channel, right? So I have to select the direction as a receiver here. Okay. So make sure that whatever the channel that you're trying to create, make sure that the direction is correct for that specific channel. Okay. Yeah. So we are done with these uh, channel creations. So now we have to create ICO integrated configuration. So for that, uh, we'll create a new object and then we'll go for ICO. So this is my um, component or the component that I have to use to create my ICO. So while creating an integrated configuration, you have to provide details related to your sender uh, application. So what are the details that are related to my sender application here? So this is my sender communication component name. Okay. And then what is the sender service interface name? Here it is asking you for interface, nothing but sender service interface, which is nothing but outbound or inbound. Source, right? So inbound, I think so. Outbound, sir. Yeah, correct. Thank you. What did you mention here in the previous class? Outbound service interface used to represent sender. Right? So what is outbound service interface that we have created? So it's under Vasista here. <clears throat> Yeah, so this is the outbound service interface that we have created. Okay, so let me copy it and then put it here. Okay, you can uh, provide these details manually, not an issue. And the namespace, it is asking you. So this is the namespace that we are using. So you can provide it here. Okay, once you have provided these three details here, you can click on create. So now it will ask you all these are details for inbound processing, receiver, receiver interfaces, outbound processing. So for inbound processing, uh, as part of inbound processing, you are supposed to select the sender communication channel, which will be used uh, to receive the data uh, into PA. So you can select the sender communication channel. Uh, you'll get the auto-populated ones. You can select the ones, uh, which is which one, uh, whatever that is relevant for you. Okay. And then uh, you go to receiver. Here, you have to provide the receiver component name. Okay to which particular receiver application you want to send the data. So that application will be having a specific communication component, right? You have to provide it here. So what is the communication component 
uh, we have to use here what is the communication component that we have to use here B bc underscore source source yeah bc underscore source is it my sender or receiver source is sender. so for receiver you need yeah here it here receiver it is receiver. talking about receiver right okay receiver bc underscore target target yeah that's what i'm asking you this receiver tab is all about you have to define the communication component that is related to your receiver to which particular receiver you want to send the data so the communication component related to that receiver you have to mention it here so now do you understand why you have to provide a, a bc underscore target here why you have to provide the name as a bc underscore target here why for this particular interface why i have to use only bc underscore target why i'm not supposed to use anything else uh, since it is written i mean like uh, target destination only right so that's why yeah, but why I'm not supposed to use anything else? Why only BC underscore target? Uh, because it is under receiver tab, we need to mention the receiver business component, like uh, what is receiving. Okay, my question is not that. Okay, try to understand. So for this specific interface, I'm not, I'm talking about only this interface, okay? I'm, there are many other interfaces in the landscape, okay? I'm talking about this specific interface, okay? So for this specific interface, what is my sender? PC underscore. PC underscore? Huh? Source, source. Source. source okay mm. so this is my sender sender application right next what is my uh, target application b underscore target so this is my receiver application so now my requirement is I have to pick the data from this uh, application. Okay, so I have to pick the data from this application. So that's why I'm using BC underscore source here. Okay, I have to send the data to this application. That's why I have to use BC underscore target here. I'm not supposed to use anything else because data has to be sent to this particular application, this specific application only. So what is a business component or a communication component that you have created only for this uh, to represent this particular application BC underscore target. That's why I have to use only BC underscore target, not anything else here. That's what you have to understand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next receiver interfaces. This is all about uh, your uh, mapping. What is the object that you have created relevant to this interface? You can select the corresponding mapping here. Okay. So this is the operation mapping that we have created using this uh, service interface. So why have you got it automatically here? So someone asked me yesterday, what is the link between ID and ESR objects and how do we create it? Okay. So this is how you get it. You have you are using this uh, service interface here, right? While creating this ICO, this service interface will be taken as a reference for you to select the corresponding operation mapping. So you have created your operation mapping using this service interface. You can see here. If you open that operation mapping, you can see 
the same service interface name. So whatever the operation mappings that are created using this service interface, all these operation mappings will be shown for you here. You can select the appropriate one for you. So here we have only one. So that's why we are able to see only one here and you can select the one that you are getting here. So this is the operation mapping that I need. Okay, next. Based on your service interface here, you will be getting the outbound processing. Okay, you can see the service interface name here. So based on the service interface name here, you can see the outbound processing here. So you have to select the corresponding receiver channel. Okay, so this is the communication channel that we have created to communicate with our receiver application to send the data. Okay, so this is how you have to configure your integrated configuration with the sender communication channel, receiver, receiver interfaces, and outbound processing. Okay, to define end to end uh, message execution or the pipeline steps. Uh, so that the message gets executed uh, in your PI uh, one of, uh, um, with all these uh, steps that you have defined here. Okay, so this is how we define integrated configuration. So then we'll save and activate. Okay, so these are the objects that are needed for us uh, uh, as part of this particular interface. Uh, um okay um for the um, requirement that we have taken so these are the objects that are needed for us okay we don't need any other objects for us to run this interface uh yes there are a few more details needed for us uh where some like uh, what is a path that we need to use uh, to pick the file what is the file that we have to pick and what should be done once you pick the file, whether it had to be deleted or it should be archived. And uh, what is the receiver communication channel detail similar to that, where you have to place the file, what is the naming convention that you have to follow. All these things are something that we will discuss in the next session as part of a file adapter configuration for both sender and receiver. For now, these are the objects that are needed with respect to parameter configurations we will discuss in the next session. Any questions till now? Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, here, yeah. <clears throat> what is meant by inbound processing and outbound processing? Inbound processing is nothing but um, the step that you are uh, uh, doing to receive the data. Inbound means receiving the data. Outbound means sending the data. Okay. Okay. For receiving the data, we use a sender communication channel. For sending the data, we use receiver uh, communication channel. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions? So uh, 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 yeah. we call outbound as a sender, no? Then how come here inbound processing? Okay. So when it comes to service interface, don't get confused with the um, naming conventions or the approach that we follow. Try to understand. I will explain it clearly. Okay. This is all about sender interface that I'm talking about. Okay, sorry, send not service, send interface, service interface. This is all about service interface, specific to service interface. When we are talking about service interface, we have two types. One is outbound, one is inbound. So when you're talking about service interface, don't look at service interface with respect to PI, okay? So let us assume that you are PI. Don't look at service interface 
with respect to PI. Okay. When you look at uh, service interface with respect to PI, what you will do for sender will push you data. Sender will send data to PI, right? So what does it mean here? Sender is sending and PI is receiving, right? So it means for sender, it is an uh, outbound case. For PI, it is an inbound case. Okay, but we will be using one service interface uh, for this right as an outbound. So that's why for service interface, we don't look at the data with respect to PI. We don't look it. Don't use this. Anytime. So for service interface, it's all about from sender or receiver perspective. Okay. Again, I'm saying for service interface, it's all about sender and receiver perspective. Now tell me for sender. For sender application, when I say for service interface, it's all about sender and receiver perspective. If I have to create a service interface to communicate with my sender, what is the type that I have to use now here? Source outbound. Huh. Yeah, outbound. Why outbound? Because from sender perspective or from source perspective, they yes, are sir. sending the data. Yeah. So it is it is something they are pushing it. So it's an outbound from them. That's why we use type as outbound to represent sender from sender perspective. Again, I'm saying sender interface will be has to be considered from sender or receiver perspective, not from PI perspective. Now tell me what is the type that I have to use for my target or receiver? Inbound or target? Inbound or? Inbound we have type or... only as inbound. Okay. Yeah. We have three inbound. types. Outbound, inbound and abstract. Abstract is something that we'll discuss later. But you just understand what is outbound and inbound. Okay. Why did we select inbound for receiver? Because from receiver uh, perspective or target application perspective, they are receiving the data which is inbound for them. That's why we select it as inbound type. With respect to service interface, is this clear? Yes. Um, okay, for Ashoda, this is uh, something first time for you. But I'm explaining this uh, for the third time now for all others. So with respect to service interface, is this clear or not? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. So... This applies only for service interface. Again, I'm saying with respect to all other communications, this will be different. Okay. With respect to service interface, you think that uh, this is uh, vice versa, but for all other communications, you whatever the, your assumption is there, right? So that is correct. Okay. So here, when it comes to ICO, what is it? You are getting the data from sender or you are receiving the data from sender right for ico when you see here sender is something that is pushing data to you it means pi is receiving the data so that's an inbound to pi that's why we call it as inbound processing here okay is it clear now why why we have inbound processing here yes 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 okay next Receiver, receiver interface, we use uh, this operation mapping. Outbound processing is nothing but PI is pushing the data. So that's why we call it as outbound processing, wherein we will use a receiver communication channel to push the data to our receiver. Okay. So don't get confused with all these terms. These are really important for you. You will get used to is, uh, I mean, you will get uh, used uh, to these uh, once you start working on these objects, start creating these objects. Okay. But as a consultant, integration consultant, 
these are really important for you to understand these basics is it clear now uh, how do we uh, refer to these uh, uh, directions uh, all these things yeah yeah yes, yes. okay fine any other questions Okay then. So if you don't have any questions, uh, that's it from my end. Uh, we'll close the session for today here, and then. Um...